Okay, you heard that one, I'm sure. Uh, anyway, I did come back to the model table last night, which you're going to see in the rollback very shortly. And I finished up our searchlights here. And we are now at this little section right here. And I think in the rollback, if I remember right, I do say something to the effect of I think we made the same sort of thing on the hood uh, just maybe a year ago. And uh, where's my pointer? Okay, so we need F35 and F38. Well, here's 35, here's 38, and we have to make two. Well, we've got two F sprues. Yeah. And as far as the rollback goes, it only lasts about seven minutes. I think it's kind of interesting, but then naturally I do, because I took the video. Okay. I'm guessing about uh, four hours has passed here since we glued the first little wheel or crank or whatever you want to call it onto our searchlight. And since then, I've done the other three. And uh, I'll move you in a little bit here. Okay, now you will remember that I was saying something about how I might just, you know, brush this, this model, except for maybe the hull and the deck. But I've concluded that there are, there are just too many items that have too much fine detail. For instance, if I, if I was to try and, and, and brush this, uh, we'd, we'd lose the detail, uh, like where those little wheels are. They, they, they just get all plugged up with paint and, and I, just couldn't, I just couldn't do it with a brush the way I can with an airbrush. So, yeah, we will, we will be using an airbrush. Um, anyway, I, I was noticing in our, in our manual that uh, we can move on to another uh, part of step one. Uh, now, step, step one, or is it no, step two that we're in. And uh, there, there's a lot of stuff in step two. Uh, it's going to keep us busy here. But anyway, I, we, can, we can move on here now. Uh, well, this... Uh, CA cures and you know it's going to be really easy to accidentally break one of these off so I'm going to have to uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this block and I'm going to put it in a tin but I'm going to have a, a see-through lid on it uh, which reminds me of a story um, I don't know I think I probably told it did I tell you the story about the time like uh, most of you know that that uh, from 1973 until when I retired I worked at the Winnipeg bus depot in the express office handling express and uh, did I ever tell you the story about the time that a lady wanted to the lady came in and wanted to ship a cake on the bus <laughs> I think I told that story anyway in, in the in the comments below if you want me to tell it again in tomorrow's episode, uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, just just let me know. But if you've heard it, uh, you know, I have a tendency to repeat myself sometimes. And it's quite possible I have told that story before. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was kind of a funny story. Uh, but it was true. It was absolutely true. Anyway, let's, let's uh, take a look at our manual and uh, uh, see what we can do next here tonight. Okay, the uh, comments are starting to come in uh, from the last episode, and uh, I was just reading them, and one of the viewers asked me, why am I trying to use extra thin to glue photo etch to plastic? And I guess I didn't make it clear. I wasn't using the extra thin to glue the photo etch to plastic. What I was using it for was to try and dissolve that little peg so that, so that the photo etch part, the hole, would, would slip over the, 
the, the peg, or the peg would go through the hole after it dissolved a little bit. Everything else, I, I did use CA glue. Uh, yeah, it, it might have looked like I was using uh, the extra thin, or possibly, without you know listening to my entire episode from yesterday, it's possible I used the the uh, the word extra thin when I meant to use CA or or say CA. So yeah, I just wanted to, to clear that up. And uh, now, very very carefully here. Okay, now my thinking is that because we can see this, we're not going to, you know, do anything bad to it. At least that's that's what we did with the Bismarck. If you remember, we did quite a few tins, if I remember right, with the Bismarck, and we did sort of a see-through type thing. In fact, some of the modules that we built uh, for the superstructure, we we did it in put put them in boxes, and then we had sort of a, a see-through thing going on, so that we could see it, and uh, yeah, if you if you can see it, you're you're not going to go and grab it. Okay, step two. There's a lot of stuff in step two. Um, yeah, I, w I was noticing that uh, when we start making some of these guns, we have to make as many as thirteen of some of them. Uh, you know, make two, make six, uh, make ten of these. Yeah, there's going to be... But we, we will get through it. We're just going to start working our way through it. Uh, uh, we won't be starting this this tonight, but uh, we, we will be starting it uh, tomorrow morning. And uh, this looks a lot like something we did for... I don't know, was it the, on the hood or the Bismarck? It looks almost identical. It's prob probably the hood, because the uh, this this is a, another British ship, and the hood was a British ship, and so in, in all likelihood, these things that were they were going to be making tomorrow, we we also did them on on the hood. Uh, we will eventually get to the airplanes. Uh, in fact, probably seven years from now, when we start the airplanes. We'll say, remember way back seven years ago when we first thought we'd never get out of step two? Well, eventually we did. No, it won't be seven years, but you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for, for this evening, folks. My voice is starting to go, and uh, I know you can't see the clock, but it says 8.25, and uh, I was up extra early this morning, so uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Okay, it is morning. Okay, it is morning. So we need 38 and 35. Now let's not accidentally go all the way down and damage our, our, our first 38 here. Okay. This should be fairly easy to trim up. Okay, it now wants us to make up eight little uh, seats, I guess they, they would be, to go around this circular device that we're going to make. And um, I kind of wish that book that I ordered was here because then we could possibly find the uh, what it is we're going to be uh, making in the, in the drawings. Um, 
anyway, um, losing my train of thought here. So we have to make up eight seats that are using the number 26 and the actual seat part, which is the 28s. And uh, I'm noticing here on the sheets that all together we have enough to make 10. So I'm thinking that possibly later on we have to make up two more. Sort of thinking, should I make up the all of them now or just maybe hold off because I'll probably end up losing it. So I think I'm probably going to end up holding off because I, I won't lose the sheet, but I might lose the little part. Um, oh, about that book we're getting. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is, is when I get it, I'm going to take out a little bit of time and I'm going to uh, photograph each page in uh, high resolution so that later on, if there's something in there that we want to see really clear, I will have already photographed it, run it through Photoshop, corrected the dark color because I do believe it's going to be dark like the, the, uh, bo the book we had from Dr Drabinsky. Uh, on the hood, and uh, but I don't think it's going to be as bad as I'm like I mentioned. Anyway, starting to ramble here again. Let's uh, let's slip on our macro lens and see if we can't get some little parts here. Okay, now I have my choice at this point. Do I take five of these off of one sheet and only three off of the other, or do I go four and four? I think I'm going to go four and four. Okay, now concentrate, Ron. Let's just swing this around and get these other ones. Usually they stick down onto the other side of the plastic better than that. Okay. Why don't I just lick my finger already? And I try to get as close to the part as I can so I don't need to do any filing. Okay, now I'll get four off the other sheet of each one, and uh, yeah. Now, I don't know if you can see it on the uh, clock over there, but on the bottom right-hand corner, last time I looked it said plus four degrees Celsius. Now, when we get plus four this time of year, in the winter time, well, I guess this time of year it would be the winter time. Uh, here in Winnipeg, um, that generally means that we are going to uh, get heavy snow, like a blizzard, because it's sort of uh, out of season, you might say. Okay, so I want to take off these four now. Yeah, so I don't know what to expect out there. I don't want to lose. 
use that. Okay, now for the seats, I need four seats. In fact, I was noticing that on the window, you probably can't see it, but where the snow has hit the glass, normally it just sort of falls off. But it's sort of staying there kind of like rain. So it's kind of scary. Okay, so there we got the four of each off of this other sheet. Okay, now let's not lose these. They are so tiny. Now I was just about all ready to lick my finger and pick these up again and then I remembered Tony's wax pencil. I mean, that's why we got this thing, right? Seven and eight. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Well, we're down to plus three Celsius. Uh, yeah, and time is marching on. Okay, now there is one aspect of this build that I have learned over the last three years. I don't even try to video it anymore. And that is trimming off the flashing. And uh, for a minute there I thought it wasn't going to work. Uh, this did not come with instructions. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's what happens is I should almost be holding this in my little tweezers that have the rubber rubber things. One of the viewers asked me, where are those tweezers anyway? Um, they're somewhere here. Anyway, those, those tweezers that I had that have the two little black pads, that's just inner tube rubber. Somebody uh, commented yesterday and was wondering, what was that? I uh, don't know if it was in yesterday's episode, but it, anyway, that, that's all that is. It's just, just the little pieces of rubber that I CA glued in between a pair of extra pair of tweezers. And they're actually quite handy for certain things. If you want to put a lot of pressure on something and have the rubber sort of fold around it and not not break the part or squash the part, it works really good. Anyway, so, so what happens here is that, that if I've got the macro lens on for something like this, and, and I'd be crazy not to because you can probably just barely see it. Okay, what, what I like to do is, is you know, twist it this way and that way and and when I'm when I'm twisting on it now something like this I want to I want to nip and turn it at the same time now I'm not gonna have to do very much uh, filing on that at all although I will do a little bit here not right now but eventually anyway uh, yeah and the, and the bottom line is I don't I I don't tr even try to video this anymore because if, if I'm using the macro lens, even if I move the macro lens a couple of millimeters in, in and out from the, from the lens, it goes in and out of focus. Well, maybe more than a couple. Maybe, maybe I got about five millimeters of, of play and that's about it. Even when I've got the macro lens stopped right down to its, uh, you know, to its smallest aperture which is f57 when it's focused at its closest dis focusing distance uh so I, I do have reasonably good well no not 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 very good uh yeah the depth of field uh, the, uh, the closer you get is uh, it just uh, it just peters right out you might say so uh where was i going with this anyway yeah so that's why I don't try to show nipping or, you know, cleaning up the sprue with the macro lens anymore. Unless it was something that was going to, on a piece that was going to stay stationary, then it would work. 
but uh, if it's not going to stay stationary and I'm just holding it in my hands, it's, it's, it's just too hard. Did, did I beat this to death? Okay, you know what? What do we got here? It's almost two o'clock. Uh, there are things I want to do yet this afternoon. So I think I'm going to say thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.